Uh, hello, everybody. I am Yulikai Brendan Murray. I am a, a spiritual king and not a physical royal like the ones in Europe. I am a I am of a spiritual lineage. And I I come from the union of several tribes in Southeast Australia. The, the first prominent tribe is the Raven tribe called Wa Wara. And that is my grandfather's people. And my grandmother's people is eagle people. So eagle is masculine, but that's my feminine side. And raven is feminine, and that's my masculine side. So it's um, it's quite unique. The eagle and the raven tribes of Southeast Australia uh, have been at the head of the two bird moiety system. Moiety means your spiritual placement. And so my office or my destiny or my spiritual place as a king has been developed within the spiritual kingdom, not this physical kingdom. So not only am I a spiritual king, I am the keeper of an item called the Black Pearl. I am also noted as the born initiate. And over time, there will be more discoveries to be discovered by the world. So much love and blessings to everyone viewing. Uh, I'd like to begin today by saying that I wish I had more to offer you as an audience and as a, as a humanity. And over time, what I have to offer will, will no doubt grow. And as long as we have faith and trust in each other, uh, which is my first point to talk about today. So my apologies for not coming forth sooner to, to talk to you guys. Uh, please forgive me. So today I'll start with talking about trust and love in each other. I've had to take notes this time. Normally I'm on the fly. But trust is a big word and trust is a... sometimes can be deemed a mythical beast because in some parts of the world we just don't see it operating as as we should see it operating or feel it operating. But sometimes, no, in fact, most times, what we feel is far more realer than what we see or hear. Because very, uh, well, not very often do what we hear or see move us within ourselves. But when we do feel something that is, becomes an internal feeling or emotion, that moves us on an energetic level. And to me, that makes feelings more real than what we see in the ear, or touch even, or think. Because thinking and feelings don't sing the same song. Um, so we are at a, a crossroads in our humanity as a whole. And when I say humanity, I always mean all things that have a living spirit in it. All of these trees are humanity. The rivers and the streams are also humanity. And I think that somewhere along the line, the, ego of, the egos of humans have claimed the title humanity. Um, which is selfish, I believe. It's not that I should believe anything. But, so trusting in each other and trusting in love and the love of each other. Love is so open and so powerful that those who, who lack it um, are not very healthy people physically because of the, the lack 
of the love they have for others in their life has programmed their DNA to be of a much lower vibration. So to have an open acceptance to the to the love we have for each other. And a lot of cynics and pessimists would like to think that um, that people can't love everyone. I don't see where the limitations are on love. I don't see where the limitations are on 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 faith. But we do have limitations on trust. And not how much we trust in people, but who we're trusting is what we must uh, limit. Because not everyone can be trusted in this world. They may not have a, an intention for you that's direct, but those who, who you cannot trust have their own intentions purely for their own survival purposes. And, and they will say and do whatever it takes to preserve uh, that, that standing in their lives. Now, one thing, in a, uh, especially down under in Australia, is one of the national sports is cutting down tall poppies because this country's got a attitude towards those who rise above the rest. And it's okay to, to accept that and actually say that now because I think in this time, it's we need to speak freely uh, without the only hindrance we should have is knowing where to draw the line on on how much we upset the listener hearing our words. Uh, and not just upset, but also how much we lift up and and um, help people feel more belonging and more accepted in a world that's in today's day and age is is very sinister to say the least and what i'm hoping to occur in the world is a, a greater understanding of the self that most people ask me how do i get to a, a point where i can see that the world is shifting and changing for, for the better i guess um and to do with the Ascension process, um, are we ascending? Are we, are we not ascending? Um, some people are on a descension process and some are on a uh, ascension process. Because not everyone is, is rising in vibration and that's sad. Um, not ever, uh, I'm a little bit uh, confused, not confused, I'm um, vexed, I guess. Now what Spirit has, has uh, taught me over the past couple of years is that even the lower vibrational beings are going to make it through the ascension process, but they may not make it through as a complete spirit or as a whole, that the frequencies may be disbanded and given to other parts of the universe to sprout new life. Um, much much like using their, their spirits or their souls as fertilizer. There will be a, a great shift has already occurred on the earth. When, uh, when Australia experiences an earthquake miles and miles away from the fault line, there's, there's shifting and changing happening right across the planet. I don't think ever before that we've had so much energetic shifting, energetic uh, um, experience, I guess. But it's not just the, the positive that we're experiencing, we're also uh, experiencing the negative because these, these two energies are, are battling to get control over our consciousness and they're battling for the real estate 
uh, that, that is our minds. That's why I encourage people not to think too much about a lot of things because uh, thinking can cause disruption in your, your aura field or your, your field, your spiritual field, to the degree where you're shutting your heart space down and shutting your intuition down too, which, which comes up from our, our, our lower stomach region. Because intuition is not here. Intuition is, is deep inside our stomach. And that's how we pick up the negative energies all around us so that we uh, can identify when someone's up to something or something's not right. And so we need to supercharge our, our intuition. And again, and we get there by clean food and clean water clean diet uh, and that clean diet is also it's not just a culinary diet but it's a, a spiritual diet in information diet we've got to be careful not absorbing information it's going to be disrupting our our energies because so often and it's happened a lot to me recently where people are, are calling me or sending me text messages to have a look at Someone online is talking wonderful things, but when I actually <laughs> listen to them, I realise that they're doing a lot of negative talk and double speak. Just that the listener isn't really fully aware of what the meanings of the words truly are. And some of it is uh, it's quite open, uh, not open for interpretation, but open to be viewed for what it really is. So words like forget, forget doesn't mean to delete from here. Forget means to obtain something that's in front of you. For is in front of you and get is to obtain. So when we forget, it's not about deleting, it's actually obtaining future knowledge. And the word um, remember also is to remember, to become a member again of the greater universe instead of withdrawn from it or cut off from it uh, or isolated from the universe. And okay. now getting back to the um, tall poppy syndrome that a lot of uh, Australians have down here. And also terminology, terminology is so important. And um, what we say to ourselves, because a lot of people have been taught words that actually keep us down and, and, and force us down on a lower vibrational level. Okay, um, so getting to um, our, our understandings of, of the modern language, particularly the English language, is that the world has been deceived around the uh, true meanings of words and a lot of it has been inverted. So a lot of the words in the modern language, we could almost turn inside out to find its true meaning. And I guess it's, we must keep in check our, our egos because our, our intellect side can overrule our intuition and cause us to not, not value the world as we should, I guess, and not value each other as we should. And I guess what that means is that uh, people who think too much uh, are not feeling enough. So that... And they're little simple, they're simple things like, like the word declare. Um, to me, the word declare means to declarify. Declare is to clear and, and make uh, transparent. But when we declare, we actually mask it. So what we're doing is uh, we're declarifying the information. So instead of declaration, we should make proclamations. 
and and other terminologies say some of the old famous quotes that the world has been saying for a long time things like united we stand divided we fall is is a as a negative speak or has a, a double speak meaning to it because united we stand divided we fall because if we all stand united we shall never fall so it should be united we stand united we win and united we we stay for united never fall so again what we tell ourselves is that we will fall if we keep saying that that old old saying so there's a, a lot of uh sayings that need to be reappropriated and rewritten in order to for us to develop a, a heightened sense in our in our intellect so that we can uh make sense of the terminology that's actually keeping us all at a lower vibration so as time goes on i guess people just need to have a look at the words they say and again like in some of the other uh presentations i've done i've always talked about words like hate uh, and resentment uh the, the negative words that that bring us down and to to change those words and to find words that don't lower our vibration but but communicate the same emotion without actually bringing us down so over time it is it's not an easy task no doubt and today i've woken up with a not necessarily a new vision for the world or for our earth but um and like i was explaining before I was I actually feel very nervous today and I feel like a, a naughty child well I'm not naughty but a misbehavior and and all of you people out there who are watching are my mum and dads and that's how nervous I feel so please forgive me and so as we go along our our, our journeys of wanting to uh, and understand I don't understand anything. And the reason for that is because I wish not to stand beneath the values of others or even to undervalue myself. And I've stayed away from and powering my myself to a degree where I can be say financially comfortable in the world. Because I didn't want to be caught in the same trappings that was catching that was actually capturing the world. So it was a small sacrifice to make I guess in the degree that um uh, people struggled with me they tell me that I should have more money and I should have this and I should have that and a lot of shoulds but pe people couldn't comprehend what I was trying to tell them about where I need to be and that I can't tell anyone else how to be or where they need to be but they need to come to that own comprehension of, of where they need to be but getting back to um love and, and trust I guess uh trusting in love too um i guess it's it's hard when people don't see it in their reality don't see enough love or compassion or and if people are not seeing that in their own environment they they need a new environment they need to be around people who have love in their hearts and uh compassion and all the things that that keep us human and 
I hope that uh, this, these messages find people who, who do need them. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, one of the other ideas that I want to talk about today is the idea about how members of humanity, uh, because of their own inadequacies and their own shortcomings, they'd like you to have those same shortcomings. In fact, they expect you to have those same shortcomings, particularly in this country, Australia. Uh, cutting down the tall poppies, people who, who shine a bit too much, uh, seem is outlawed. So don't let no one um, take your shine off. Shine freely, as I could say. And during the, the short break that we just had, I had to get something warmer on because it got cold out here. Uh, and also, because I've been so nervous during this talk today, I actually had to call someone quickly and uh, basically like an oracle. There's a lady I'll, I'll call and talk to who, who helps uh, keep me on track. Uh, just, just with advice. So she told me to speak freely and to let the inner child shine. So here, like uh, some people have said uh, to me, do you think you're better than me and the rest of us? And these were people who were vibrating low and had hatred in their hearts and souls. And yes, I am better than that. And so are you. So it's okay to say yes, because they want your vibration as low as theirs and they want you to be a captive in their own uh, in their own minds like like they are well, in your own mind like they are so don't let no one else dictate to you where your vibration is or where your spirit lies uh, with your own life so yes it is okay it's not an ego thing to say or to accept that you're better than them it's that's not ego, that's some, look, a lot of time it's a fact. So speak the facts. And if they are trying to bring you down, tell them to go away. And if they ask, if they say you, you know, ask you if you're better than they are, say yes, because it's true. And it's okay to say yes. And it's okay to speak the truth. Uh, don't be frightened of it. Don't be fearful of it. And try not to be as nervous as I am <laughs> when we speak it, because this, this world needs great truths. This world needs uh, people to protect their ascension process. Because those other people want to drag you down. Don't let them. Uh, allow others to raise us up instead. Put yourself in the environment of people, where people are lifting each other up and rising above our own inadequacies every day. Over time, I've, I've come to under, I comprehend, not understand, see, I get caught. Over time, I've come to comprehend certain values of ourselves where we can, um, Oh, how can I say? Uh, not let others dictate to us who we are and what we are. Uh, and I also wanted to talk a little bit about death, even though it's, it's not real. Death is just a transformation of uh, one reality to another reality. Both realities as real as each other or as real as the other realities. Slowly but surely, um, 
myself has been undergoing a a slow and painless death because it, uh, the world desired a better me and the old me was inadequate so i had to allow the old me to to die so i'm i wasn't necessarily i'm not necessarily dying i uh, going through the, the death of my ego and that's part of it but also the death of all things that used to be me in order to become reborn into to a human that the world requires and needs at this point in time. Uh, people are so not necessarily lost, but feeling that things are not moving fast enough in our reality. We're not seeing or hearing our ascension process. That's why early on in the presentation, I spoke about feeling, that our feelings are actually more real to us than our, our eyes and ears. Because our eyes and ears are to make sense of the 3D world, uh, not, to, not to feel the worlds that are not 3D or that are above or below the 3D levels. So feeling things out, if some if you feel something, it's, it's real. There's, a, there's no doubt about that, because feelings move us. So over time, we need to have trust in our own strengths and trust in our own judgment too, because I know that the world judges. And everyone judges at the same time. Says, at the same time, a lot of people say, don't judge. Why they are judging is not the words, don't judge a judgment in itself. Those who say don't judge are normally those committing crimes and sins against humanity. So again, people will say discernment. And I say, no, judgment because they don't want us judging each other because that's actually how we correct our vibrations through judgment of each other. And again, it's more lies that have been told to us by the world who wants to commit crimes, by, by people who want to continue to commit crimes and have us not judge them for it. No, we shall judge. Um, and I know that may sound odd coming from a spiritual perspective when so many spiritual teachings talk about non-judgment. But who, who is to say they are right? Uh, well, in hindsight, who is to say I am right? That's, that's for you, the listener, to absorb the information and, and make a meal out of it that's suitable for you. Uh, in your environment and your families, uh, within your communities and peoples around you. And sometimes family comes in many forms. It's not always blood. Sometimes family is, is people who just have a similar idea on, on how the world should be or how the world can be. Because at the moment, the world is in a very narcissistic place uh, when we look at the attacks on the world the attacks against humanity which are, are forthcoming right now all over the place TV and media is terrible 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 um, and it's it's not good enough I think the world desires better of us and definitely the, the children and the animals and the nature of this world deserve better of us. So one of my last quotes was, this world belongs to the children, so adults beware. And beware of what? Let them find out. They'll find out when it happens. So we're not going to give too many secrets away, but there is a underlying movement in the spirit world that now is 
spirit had uh, told me that every time the evil in this world brings an action against us, so too shall the light bring an action against that action. Uh, not just to match it, but to but to encompass it and beat it. So every attack against humanity will teach us lessons that we can use against the evil in this world. Not everyone has a stomach for uh, conflict. But the conflict is inevitable in this earth because so many people are in conflict with their own thoughts between their heart space and their head space. It's conflict everywhere. So if there must be conflict, let's make that conflict make a difference in the world. Let's, let's have that conflict uh, be meaningful and purposeful. And myself, I don't like conflict, um, and nor should anyone. And, and I, I don't think any of you people like conflict. So, but there must be conflict because there is no resolution without it. There's nothing to resolve if we didn't have conflict. But this, this world needs solutions. Uh, humanity needs solutions. And now we, I think I was talking about before the, the ascensions that that's happening all over the place. Uh, and I'm not sure if I actually spoke about, um, you can help me here, Addy. Actually, you there? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Um, during our last presentation, did I did I speak about a treaty that was signed on the Earth between the Anunnaki and Reptilian and humanity? No, you did not speak no, about it, but not. you told me about it. Okay. Yes. Well, I, I, or maybe I might mention that. Please do. Okay. Um, so, during 2020, there was a lot of movement in the world on, on all levels. Physical, spiritual, all the life. Okay. And there were many... Uh, fake speakers of the light out there who are they're not necessarily deceiving people but their intentions for what they say is deceiving not what they say their intentions for what they say and it's for a long time i've seen how people were beginning to manipulate each other with their own intentions and it was hard for me to actually expose them because no one around me understood what I was talking about. That, that for some reason, people had the idea that we actually couldn't look inside each other and see what our intentions are or see what our desires are for the world. But I've met a lot of people who can do that. And so we know that we can't hide secrets. We can't hide our true intentions anymore particularly in this time frame, because we are in a time of the quickening and the unveiling, which means, and that's why the evil in this world is actually doing all of this to us, because they are unveiling their uh, control over us. They are unveiling their ownership over us. And it is unacceptable. On, on any levels and all levels. Um, so during 2020, a lot of things have uh, occurred. Now the spirits who, who guide me and um, help me achieve certain levels of consciousness and knowledge are the seven spirits of creation that form this world and this first form. And so last year in January, when the spirits of creation approached me and they told me to say goodbye to peace on the earth, 
for the interim. And I knew what that meant, and I knew that there was about to become uh, major events in the world that were going to attack humanity to bring to cause the captivity of the whole world. And again, that's unacceptable behavior by any entities, let alone those who are attached to humans. The so last year in January, I was told to say goodbye to peace on the earth for the interim. And there were some other words spoken to me that I, I can't yet repeat, but the last conversation was that they told me it was my job to bring, to begin the apocalypse. Now, a lot of people see the word apocalypse as war and conflict, but it's not. The word only means to reveal truth. And that's all the word means. So the truth of matters is, is that humans are in an are in strife. And we, we can see that right across the world. But what I've come to comprehend is that uh, we can do something about this now. We have the opportunity. We've been given the opportunity to, to create a whole new world. I see all over the world that people are protesting the lockdowns and, uh, and the mandatory poisonings and and that none of these things can should or can be mandated against humanity we are we are free human beings on the earth people just need to accept that and so over the course of time things shift and change and we, we come to different comprehensions about our our place in the world and what we can actually do about it so, a couple of years ago, I'll tell you a little story about how I had a group of reptilian entities come into my camp where I was camping, um, homeless, with a, a bunch of kids and animals. We lived on an old road. I found an old road and I, I just put up a gate and moved in. And... And during my time in that camp, I was watching a few kilometers away in the sky, I was watching a, a golden orb, which is a Pleiadian craft, attacking an underground base that was a few kilometers away from our location. And I understood, oh, sorry, I comprehended what was going on. And it proved to me that yes, there is celestial help here. And uh, the Celestial Alliance that's uh, helping us is doing their job by counteracting the negative Celestials here who are uh, controlling the negative man. So it's up to us to deal with the negative human side. Because uh, we are humanity, so we have to clean the human um, frequencies up or to clean the human world up and the celestials will clean up the celestial side of things and the spirit world will clean up the spiritual side of things. So there's three levels of the conscious war that's been happening. So, and we all rely on each other. The celestial side is relying on us to do our job. We're relying on them to do their job. Spirit relies on both of us, celestial and human, to do our job. And we both rely on the spirit world to do its job. And it's all intertwined in one great reality. That's not necessarily um, like withdrawn from us. Those, those realities are right here with us now. We are at a time of emergence with, with realities, which is uh, not just ideas, but they're it's like different radio stations right here. And we're, we're so close to tuning in and out of these other ideas other um, forms of reality in other worlds. So had I not witnessed um, an underground base been attacked, I might have been a bit dubious on the information about the cleanup. 
but I, I have seen it myself, my own. Again, my own eyes in ears. Again, we must be very careful about. But about two hours after that, it's been attacked a band of shadow men coming to my camp. And I was sitting in. Yeah, I didn't have an office. And as I'm sitting in this whole car parked in the bush, a group of men were arguing as they walked into our camp. And I thought it was a bit late to have visitors. And as I looked out, I realized there was no torches. It was in the night time. No torches, no lights on, but a group of shadows approaching me in the car. So these shadow men stopped about five or six meters away from my vehicle. And while one approached and I had the interior light of the vehicle on, this shadow approached the passenger door where I was sitting. And as I looked up, this shadow said to me, we want you to call off the attack on our base. I said, why? Because I was intrigued. Not the fact that there was a shadow person there, but for the fact that why would they come to me to ask to protect them and stop the attack on their base? And when I asked why, this shadow said to me, we have a treaty with your bloodline. And that's how we found you, by the vibration of your blood. And you must honor the treaty. So I fought for a couple of seconds. And then I, I knew about an ancient treaty that my blood had with the celestials. So I said, yes, there was a treaty. But your lot broke the treaty when you overruled the free will of man. It was okay for celestials to be here. The Anunnaki, the reptilians, and now Elohim are only celestials. They're not gods. And maybe on a future presentation, I'll tell you how I know. Well, I'll tell you now, anyway. I was here before the Anunnaki and the Elohim was on the earth. And I'll give you more information about that in time to come and maybe on the next presentation. And I won't take so long to, to do another one. Um, if you ask for it, I will uh, give it to you. Again, there's, there's no such thing as silly questions, only silly answers in the world. Because if we need to know something, we can only ask. So when these shadow people, and I couldn't tell if they were Anunnaki or a reptilian asked me to call off the attack on their base, I simply told them no. In fact, I told them to F off. I told them to F off out of my camp and, and out of this world that they no longer had the rights to exist on this earth for what they have done to us all. And so after that, about 18 months later, oh no, actually just last year in November, I was taken by the seven spirits of creation and put into a location, much like it is now. It was a beautiful sunshine. And I was presented with a baby on a table, uh, on, a, on a rug, and the baby had one reptilian eye and one, what people would call a demon eye, I guess, the full black tint. And there's a baby with one reptilian eye and one demon eye placed on the table. And the spirits who presented me with the baby said, it's up to you whether or not these beings shall have a place in the new earth. And as I looked down at this baby, I picked up the baby and I embraced the baby. And I said, yes, of course. I said, no child shall ever stand trial for the crimes of his parents. And this is also the same how the tribes who have been invaded for so long uh, also treat the modern people in their countries. 
So if I couldn't have an agreement designed with the descendants of the Anunnaki and reptilian races who are, who many have become benevolent because of feeling the love here for so long, they can't help it because this place, this earth is all love. It's, it's love is its power base. So I said, yes, they shall have a place, but they shall not be the ruling class. This is a human world to be ruled by humans, not by celestials. And a lot of people talk about star seeds and the celestial beginnings. And that's awesome because, and a lot of people are starting to understand the hybridization of humans as well. And that there's only, actually only a very small percentage of true humans left on the earth when everyone else has hybridized DNA. But don't let that get anyone down. I've had some people call me who have understood that, they've, that they're hybrids. And they don't know how to react or think about it because they're getting guilty because they see what's happening in the world. And I said, well, don't feel guilty about who and what you are, firstly. Um, let it shine, let your true self shine, regardless of what people say and regardless of their actions around you. Because that's what we're really here to do is to, to sing our song to the fullest. Whether that's a negative song or a positive song or a song that swaps and changes throughout their verses. It's everyone must sing their own song. Uh, everyone must be their own spirit. Everyone must be their own uh, commander in a way. So again, uh, if I didn't receive the benevolent side of the Anunnaki and reptilian uh, descendants on the world, then as a as a mixed relation black man in Australia, then I might as well just charge white Australia with genocide. It'll be no different. And this is how humanity must look at the benevolency of the celestials who in the past have deceived us. But forgiveness has strength and forgiveness has power in a way that uh, words cannot explain. So these beings are now prepared to assist us and help us in our journey in exchange for us to assist and help them. Now, after the new treaty was signed through the embrace of a baby, and I simply said, all babies are innocent. No child shall suffer the consequences of his parents' actions anywhere in the universe, let alone here. That shortly after that event, I was taken to another location. And during that, in that location, it was a, a dimly lit room. And in this room, I was left alone with a very, very attractive lady. Um, attractive how we see ourselves, you know, like on a physical sense. But she had the full black eyes. And, and I understood what was going on. I, thought I comprehended. And what I comprehended was she was offered to the world as a, not as a prize, but as a form of respect in, in marriage. So I approached this, this very beautiful uh, Anunnaki lady and she had the presence of royal blood, like a, a princess or a queen. And when I approached her and I said to her, what do you think of being used as a an item or as a tool of of uh, agreeance? And what that means is that when two old kingdoms come together, royals would be married together to cause peace between the two kingdoms. So I was presented with a very, very beautiful Anunnaki, I don't know, queen or princess. So as I got close, 
I was very intrigued on on where they were coming from. So I'd asked this lady, uh, was she happy being used as as an an item or a tool of of uh, agreements between peoples or, and between us and them? She said to me that she would do whatever her, her elders ask. And that's all she was doing, was doing as her elders had uh, as asked of her. And then I said, why? Why are your elders doing this now? And she said to me that they wanted love back into their beings because they haven't had love for thousands and thousands and thousands of years in their own presences, in their own spirit. And they want, and they knew that if they didn't have love in their, their hearts, they were not going to survive this earth. Which, and which is more evidence to me that the world is rising in vibration. And those who lack love in their hearts will not survive the the rising vibrations. They're um, they're going to be existing in a whole different reality of a much lower vibration. So. These celestials, they want love back in their life and they want us to teach them what love is because they know that they're not going to survive without it. And then I got close enough to ask this, this, this beautiful being if I could see her real eyes because the black was just a shield over her eyes. So when you see the children or people with the full black eyes, that's a tinted shield like sunglasses. That's not their true eyes. Their true eyes are very sensitive to the light. So they need to be shielded. So she dropped her left shield and showed me her real eyes. And what a beautiful image was shown to me in the eyes of an Anunnaki woman. She had six pupils in her eye like a flower was growing. And it was one of the most beautiful things that I, I've ever seen. I, I couldn't imagine something that beautiful. It was even more beautiful was the fact that they're looking to ascend with us and they want, they need our help as, as much as it may sound weird, but we need their help too in certain areas of, uh, of our human battle on the earth. And we, we need these people as allies because what we're up against in this world is very intelligent and very driven. So we talk about unity then and unity consciousness, then that must be applied right across the board, even to those who have caused us harm in the past who now want uh, love and now want who are no longer battling against us, but rather want to work with us and help us retrieve the world from negative forces. So over time, things will start to appear in our consciousness, in our, in our hearts and minds, because our mind still has its place, but it's truly to make sense of what we feel, see and hear, and what we feel in our hearts and our intuition. And so we'll, we'll be helping each other. That will help us with certain issues that, that we can't do alone. And we'll be helping them raise their, their frequencies with love, forgiveness and acceptance. And also belonging helps love manifest more. Because it's hard to feel what love is if we don't have somewhere to belong. Where do we belong? Do we belong here, there? It's, um, it can be confusing sometimes. I'm just going to take my notes. So as, as we go through time, uh, rest assured that, that there is, is movement in the spirit world and through, through, our, through our mother, she is vibrating higher and higher on a daily basis. 
and that's why we we need to um, get. Uh, how could I say? We need to raise up ourselves constantly and keep ourselves in check constantly. Watch out! Watch our every words. Watch our every thoughts. And in order to be, to be the best that we can be for the world, in order to be the best that we can be for for ourselves and each other. Um, I've never been a self lover, and I've only had to come to that comprehension recently, where I knew that if I if I couldn't find love in the heart for for what I am, then maybe I shouldn't speak it to others. So uh, because I've seen the dangers of loving this, there's loving the self, and then there's self love. I think those who love themselves. Uh, loving it from a vanity point of view, but those who have self-love are looking at it from a from a spiritual sense. So our um, our world is shifting and changing, and believe it or not, you are ascending. It's just that it's it's a step by step process. We must uh, raise a little bit and raise a little bit. And it's, it's also so a clever game of chess that's been played. And not only, um, I'm not a pawn in that game of chess anymore. I refuse to play that, the, the intellectual or human game, but rather see the chessboard as a spiritual movement and a conscientious um, game. And that the chess, so when we move on the chessboard in this in the spiritual realm, that we do it with the greatest emphasis on what we will become, by me, on what will become from that move. What is the desired outcome from my next move? And that outcome must outweigh uh, any other negative form that will cut out, that will come from out of what we say or do. And I'm probably starting to babble a little bit. So as I look around the world and I see the, um, and I, I'm in two minds about it, about the protest and rallies. I know people, when, when pushed to certain uh, limits can can break and, and want to go out and do something about it and rally and protest. So what we're realising uh, in Australia is that a lot of people uh, protest and I ask them, I, I say, what are you protesting for? They said, freedom. I said, what freedom? They were never free before the virus yet they're, they're fighting for freedom now. So are they truly fighting to be re-enslaved in the comfortable form of slavery that we once had? Um, and to me, that's evidence of apathy in society, that none of these people understood or even realized they were captives until they was affected personally by by today's events again it comes back to that mandatory vaccination mandatory poisoning and anything that's mandatory and so i'll be talking to people in this country soon about why would they want to go back to what they had so what they had was an ignorant form of slavery but it was a comfortable form it was a, a form of slavery that they were comfortable with and but I was never comfortable with that form of slavery. Uh, nor should any of us. Uh, it's, and it's that comfortability back then that's actually led us into more captivity now. It's it's very it's very hard to explain to people what you see of the future. 
because uh, so many people have come back to me and said, I didn't realise what you were telling me, but now I see it. Normally because it had to affect them personally, which is, I, I comprehend to certain degrees, but it's also a sign of ignorance and apathy. So these people in this country are only fighting to be re-enslaved to a form of slavery that they were uh, happy with or comfortable with. Not knowing or seeing that now, we could uh, we have had an access point of crossroads in our reality and humanity. Then why why go backwards to what we once had to the, mm, the norm? when we can actually now start to develop a, a road ahead that's more suitable for a higher consciousness humanity and that's more suitable for, um, how could I say, sustainability for this earth, both on all levels, sustainability, physically, spiritually, you know, food, nature, environmental, water, air quality, Everything can change and shift because the, the old guard is actually falling. So what we're going through at the moment is a changing of the guard. And they know it. Uh, the spirit world knows it, both negative and positive, And the higher echelon of humans know it, both negative and positive. Because all dynasties fall, all civilizations fall. This, this civilization is no different. So we have an opportunity now to seize control of our planetary direction. And if people say we're not allowed to, who are they? Tell them to go away and, and speak their nonsense to others. Of course, we can take this world back. I think that's why we're here. And I think that, oh, again, thinking's wrong. Sorry, I believe or I feel that uh, we have a great opportunity now. An opportunity that the world has never, ever been given before and may never have again if we let this opportunity slip away from us. And pardon me. over the next two years, I guess, we will see the, the human consciousness transforming into different belief structures. And I know that some people may struggle with certain ideas that's about to be given to the world by, by myself and others. And that to not look at to not look at tomorrow through yesterday's eyes, I guess would be a way to put it. That we should be looking through at tomorrow with fresh eyes. Now, what I mean by yesterday's eyes is is again that old paradigm, that old way of thinking, the, the edited speech, the um, the, the dumbing down of the intellect through the education system. And universities are very, very bad places to be. Very bad places to send your children's minds. Because uh, they have a, an agenda too. Now also, I think I'm moving. Okay, yep. Yes, chance and opportunity to make great change. And this is where we are today that we can do this. Um, you and I and all of us can do this. It's not a, it's not that hard. It's not a mystery. It's, it's plain and simple that humans are far greater in our purpose than we could ever imagine. Humans are far higher in our conscious level than we've been led to believe. And we are all powerful in ways that the negative 
really don't like. Now, a few years ago, I was, I was quoted cert in certain ways and questioned in certain ways. And one thing was said to me, if there's so many negative aliens running this world, why don't they just come out and rule us as, they, as they're working towards? I said, because they've tried it before. They've tried it before and we defeated them. And people looked at me like I was crazy, like how, how, how did we defeat them? What, with sticks and stones? I said, no, this and this. We defeated the negative of our consciousness. And we've done this three times before in three other earthly realities. And this is uh, teachings from, from my human teachers. And this is our fourth reality that humans have developed conscientiously and live through. And them other three worlds have uh, passed. So my teachers have explained that this is the final one. Not that this is the make and breakers, but they, the universe comprehended that we're rising each for each world and that this fourth one will, will have us vibrate high enough to become uh, not necessarily more celestial in our spiritual structures but more more comprehending of the greater creation that's that's been gifted to us all and not only is creation a gift to us, but we are a gift to creation. And I, I, I like to think, well, again, thinking bad, bad thinking. I'd like to believe, no bad belief, no good. I'd like to feel that uh, we are unifying in our processes and fields. And there is a great matrix, but it's not out there. Uh, Sometimes you got to dodge bad words that come at you, but uh, that's not the sort of matrix we, we live in. We live in a bio matrix, which is real. Now we can jump on the earth and know it's real. We can run into a tree and know it's real. It's not an illusion and it's not a simulation because simulations are not real. But we are and the earth is. So we're not a simulation. We live in an electrical molecular universe that's, that has laws. And one of those laws is that the whole universe is made up of spheres on a molecular level. Electrons, protons, our quantum physics, is, quantum physics is actually slowly catching up to how the, uh, a lot of our spiritual teachers used to teach and believe in the, in the on a molecular level so was, some of my human teachers taught me that we live on a ball it truly is a ball floating in space and whether people want to call it a simulation i'm not sure but we are very real not only are we very real we are very powerful and the world doesn't want you to know that the world doesn't know doesn't want you to know of your own power that you have because we will defeat the negative it's not a matter of if it's only when and we will retrieve our world from ignorance incompetence negativity evil and and hand it back to the children uh spiritually it's not that we're gonna put you know a heap of children in charge of the un although that might be a wise thing at least there won't be any negative coming out of it uh again it's to be filled it's, it's through feelings that we get confirmation and sometimes our eyes and ears give us clues uh, as to as to our, our own levels of ascension and where we sit on a vibrational level. And the ascension process is very real. 
and it's it's occurring every moment. Every moment there's there's a fluctuation. It's either up or down, up or down. But slowly you want the steps to keep going up. You, you try not to go down in vibration if we can. So we, we try to keep it up and up and up as, as much as we can. Uh, on a on a day to day basis, when people have asked me how do I get access to to uh, extension or how do I do it, what do I do? I guess just on a day to day basis, again it, it really comes down to our our thought patterns, our our levels of understanding of terminology to again to to watch what we say to each other and keep ourselves in check and and that every day and it's not easy out there when we see the way the world is going that things are about to get a little bit worse for us all and not to sit, not to lose hope or faith uh, not to lose uh, any any love or uh, not to regain or gain resentment or hatred or do not gain uh, anything in our psyche or our psychology that's going to bring us down. So forgiveness is great to that degree where um, it doesn't mean that you can't tell someone off. You know, if if there is like conflict, say someone trying to tell you to put a mask on or go get vaccinated, tell them to go away, and that's for them to go and do. You know? Sometimes people say don't engage, but sometimes we have to because we have to uh, sometimes defend our our rights to to be and our rights to our freedom is a loose term let's face it is so the world is is rallying and protesting to regain an old form of slavery which they didn't understand was slavery and that's why uh, i think that we can move beyond that let's not go backwards we can't regain that that we can only go now and, and and help each other develop a world that better suits uh, human sustainability or environmental sustainability, spiritual sustainability, where firstly children are, are better protected in our world than they are now and ever before. And there is right and wrong and right and wrong is simply divided by the ending of a product or situation being negative or positive for the greater number of people. If it's positive for the greater number of people, it must be right. If it's negative for the greater number of people, it must be wrong. But somewhere there is a dividing line. So we need to find that dividing line so that we, we don't carry on in this world, um, sharing wrongness or being wrong and trying to enforce our wrong ideas onto others. Because those who are wrong are normally enforcers. And those who are right don't feel the need to enforce anything, but rather just be. So on a day-to-day -day basis is to just to stay strong start to develop a sense of independence from the system. Um, food, water, um, social activity. You know, gravitate towards people who, who are willing not to follow the sheeple. And so that we can unify the, the human field. So we're not going to unify the human field by by constantly um, isolating ourselves in small pockets, but rather we need to gravitate towards those who, who gravitate or who vibrate like us in a way. And that's, that's what unity is. It's about vibrating, correlating our vibrations a bit closer together. It's actually got 
very little to do with the physical presence of coming together, rather the conscious presence of coming together. So over time, we could uh, actually, uh, we get into a feedback loop. When is a group of positive people together? The positivity levels rise and rise and rise and rise because it becomes a positive feedback loop. And it's the same for the negative. You get into a negative feedback loop, it's, that's why it's hard to get out of a rut of a, of a negative idea. But sometimes, you know, through this process over the years, we've had to sort of allow negative impacts on us so that we can have a better comprehension of it. As I explained to a young man on the phone last night, uh, who didn't know right and wrong. He thought right and wrong was not real. But I only said one question to him. Well, not a question, I, I told him a statement. Which was, um, you know, for those who don't believe in right and wrong, is it wrong to hurt children? Of course it is. That's wrong. So if it's wrong, they must be right. So there is right and wrong, it's how we're perceiving it. And that's another lie in the world, that right and wrong is purely perception. Those who say that are those who are normally have an intent in their own agenda in the world around them, whether it be some form of control or uh, receive some kind of benefit from that wrong intent. We don't have intent in my world. We only have desire, their desire to, to be, firstly, and their desire to, to do good for each other. And when we do good for each other, we do good for ourselves. It's, it's automatic. There's no um, mystery to it. So if some of the audience out there want to, uh, in the comments section, down below, I'm getting a little bit techy now. Um, it may be for my next presentation that there can be some questions posed and I can take impressions, I'll take some notes and then, because I want you, the audience, to get the best of me. Uh, sometimes that's why I sit back and I get a little bit uh, convexed or, or um, a little bit too deep. So I want to make sure that you guys get the best of me. And, and that's just a simple philosophy that we, we should expect the best from each other. Not expect, but wish for the best for each other and of each other at the same time. And do you, it's okay to defend your sentient right to be. Because um, there will be conflict. It's just a matter of what are you going to do with that conflict? Will you defend your, your righteousness and your right to be? Or will you allow yourself for that, to be brought down in conflict and to go do things that's not good for us in any way, shape or form? And today I've avoided talking about politics, which is great. So thank you, universe. <laughs> and I wish you all the best. Uh, and I, I love you all. And I hope you love me. But you don't have to, because I love you anyway. And right across this world, we're going to be organizing an event soon um, to do a major clearing right across the earth. And we're yet to uh, organize the details, but again, if, if there's questions that the audience out there wants, please leave those questions in the comments section. Um, I probably won't read them myself because I don't watch myself on video. I don't even like the sound of my own voice. It annoys me, really. So I can see how it annoys the negative, it annoys me sometimes. But 
So I, I wish to be the best I can for you people. And I wish for you people to be the best for all of us and for me. And I need confirmation and uh, lifting up just as, just as much as any. So, so bless you all. And uh, thank you, Green Tara, for, for having me on again. And I look forward to communicating again shortly. And I'll, I'll try not to be so long next time. So you all have a, a blessed and wonderful day. And night, and day, and night, and day. And hopefully that will carry on to a daily, daily process of having lovely days and blessings. And I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. And you look okay. Thank you. I wanted to share the love that we all have for you and the appreciation we have for you and that we are always being brought back together somehow by the spirit to create these beautiful sharings that you have for humanity. And I'm so grateful. And again, I would like to just say everyone who made it with us to the end of this video, we would like to bless you with our love. Thank you. Thank you.